Good afternoon, Mr. Griffith. Good afternoon. How are you doing sir. today? All right. All right. So, um, could you just introduce yourself? Uh, my name is uh, Kelvin Griffith. Good afternoon, Mr. Cheryl. Good afternoon. I thank you for doing this interview with me. You're um, do you mind introducing yourself? My name is Cheryl Griffith, and I'm one of the members of the Happy yeah. Smith Symphony. Good afternoon, Mr. Griffith. Hi. Um, do you kindly introduce yourself? My name is Kyle Griffith. I'm currently a student at Manchester Community College, and I'm the second band player in Hartford Steel Symphony. Good evening, Kayla. Hi, I'm Kayla. How are you? How are you today? I'm good. Alright. Um, do you want to start off by introducing yourself? Sure. I'm Kayla, and I'm a part of Harvard Steel Orchestra, and I'm also a part of Mighty Man Steel Orchestra. Good evening, Miss Hudson. Good evening. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Um, do you mind introducing yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Danielle Hudson. I'm um, going to be an upcoming junior at Trinity, new member of Harper Steel Symphony.
Silver Stars and was, that band was together for about 16 years and then we had a big fallout and the band split up in two and I leave well, Silver Stars and before New Dimension and then I moved to Hartford about 92, 93, Hartford have us had Hartford Steel and when I come down I come down and I the woman is boss for them and then learn a board instrument then make new instrument and then I end up being the well the leader of the band. So from 19 uh, 92 93 as I say to now and uh, band we function. The tuning aspects is as you know tuning is come from the length of time you spend on band. Um, nobody really can teach you tuning but it what somebody and see what they do but it, what the person doing it then bound to work for you. You have to find a method and find how to get the octaves and across the fifths and fourths across, you know. So tune is something, and you have to spend a lot of time. I spent almost about 40 years tuning, tuning, trying, can't groove neat, 
I go the lines in straight. Uh, but again, America has it go to the pawn shop and buy any tool you want. So if you groove on it, you do like how it groove. You can get a machine and brush the pan right on groove, brush out the groove and draw over the line and groove it over. So it, it's it are plenty things you could do to spend a lot of time. But I like I used to make tenors, used to make second pan, um, guitars, cello and bass. I like background pan. I do like front line pan, it requires too much time. Tenors too hard to make it the hard to sing. First beginning and you have to you have to buy the drums are expensive. You, you know, can't get a drum outside. Like we could get a drum and make bass and you could get a drum and make cello. Yeah, they had to buy special drums for tenor. Drums that didn't have no writing. So they could get it to deep, get it to sing that deep. And from there I start having staying with say with steel. We go to Panorama in New York. I blend up pan for branches, I blend pan for metro, I blend up pan for new dimension, I blend up pan for silver stars, I make pan for Trinity College, I make pan for Wesleyan College, the University of Connecticut have some of my pan, I make pan for First Cathedral Church. I make pan for Dr. Ko, um, and he's in charge of a pan class in the summer. Otherwise, um, this is the band here. So, how long have you been a member of this band? Actually, from inception, I'm one of the founders of the band, so um, we started the band in 1989 so from 1989 until present so i have been so <clears throat> could you guide me in terms of the steps well Maria? actually what happened was we had a band from boston mm -hmm. that came into hartford and played at the west indian day parade and somehow the whole band ended up at my house they stayed whilst they were in hartford which is here, right? Which is on Blue Hills Avenue okay. in Hartford. And um, after that, like about a month or so, the captain of the band came down and asked if we would be interested in starting a steel drum band. And um, we grabbed at it. Right. So that's really how it started. Um, there were a few other members mm -hmm. that um, started it up with us also and that's where Hartford Steel Symphony started. So how many members would you say the band was officially started with? At that time we had um um one two we had probably like about four tenors. We had two seconds, we had um a bass, tenor bass, um guitars and uh, cellos, mm -hmm. one, you know, one of everything per se, okay. and your kitchen, which we call, you know, your drummer and your... Right. Yeah. All the percussion All instruments. All the percussion okay. instruments, yeah. Um, so can you give us some examples of the repertoire in the band, that you, the repertoire, the, the genres of songs that you guys own? Oh, oh my God. Just some examples. You name it, we do um, things like, hello, never can say goodbye, um, in the mood, um, it lean on me, calypsos that I can't even begin to, you know, think back. And, and back in those days, in my days, I, I also played the tenor bass and the guitar band also. Um, as time progressed and we, most of our kids then end up being a part of the steel band. And um, songs change. So I would, you know, in a nutshell, we do Calypso jazz, we do R&B, we do gospel, we do reggae, you know, all in a nice island rhythm. 
stuff. In other words, we are a band for all occasions. Mm -hmm. Actually, we even did funerals. Okay. So, yes. So, so coming from the Twin Island of Trinidad and Tobago, when you came to the U.S., did you have any idea or did you have a vision that you were going to start your own steel? Absolutely band? not. Had this not been presented to us, mm -hmm. you know, um, it was never really a thought. It was never a thought to say, but seeing that it came to us, you know, we did figure out like, how ah, we can do this. Yes. All right. So how long have you been a member of HSSO? So I've been a member since maybe I've been around 12 or 13, seeing how uh, my parents are in charge of the band. It was almost inevitable I would eventually play. I didn't officially really start playing with the band until I was around 13. Oh, so were you interested in music before this? I've always been interested in music, so I've always been kind of following behind my dad. Right. So uh, I was always into music, but I wasn't officially with the band being able to play and all that stuff. But I always had an interest in music. Any 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 instrument in particular that like sparked your interest or? Well, before I actually played playing, I was actually in school and I played. I started out on the violin, it was actually my first instrument. Then from violin, I moved on to saxophone. So I played saxophone actually for a few years before I even really got into playing pan. Okay. So that's where my music interest kind of started up until I started playing steel pan. Okay, and so would you say that having these experiences I'm learning violin and saxophone that give you a, a better ability to play the steel pan or is it something different? Definitely. So within me learning outside instruments, I also learn how to read music. Right. So once you learn uh, reading music, I also took some music theory classes as I got older. You start getting a more understand of music in general and just not by instruments. So my knowledge got larger than just the knowledge for a violin or just the knowledge for a saxophone or just knowledge as a steel pen. Right. That has a, a bigger musical knowledge. Right. So now I learned my scales, my chromatics, my chords, you know, things like that. With all in all, it just helps me be a better pen player. Okay. All right. Well, um, would you like to give some examples off the top of your head of some of the repertoire of the music that you guys play? Well, at the moment, we have a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. but it all stems from a Calypso vibe, mm -hmm. just from, you know, the origin of the steel pan, things like that. But um, we can play almost anything that has just a very musical background. We like to say, like, anything that you can't actually play on a piano, mm -hmm. or, like, anything that you can't play on other instruments or other orchestras, mm -hmm. it applies the same way for steel pan. So, you know, it's like we can't really expect to be trying to play like a rap song or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, it got to be something with more of a musical background that you can spread amongst multiple instruments. Could you give a few examples? Like a few so songs? So, like, um, we have a song like Rock the Boat, which is mm -hmm. very like Calypso type vibe. But then we also have um, our Robin Thicke song that's more of an R&B type okay. of laid back sound. But then we also have In the Mood, mm -hmm. which is kind of uh, a jazz feel to it. Mm -hmm. So those are just like three different examples of how our repertoire of music can span right. to different types. Or like some of the songs that we're playing now, we're playing the, the Calypso song Sweet for Days, mm -hmm. but within the song we have a Bobby Brown song in it. Okay. So just, as long as it's something that can be out musically output to mm -hmm. multiple instruments, it's something that we can play. So how many songs collectively does your band own? <sighs> well... But then um, players come in and leave in and new players. Songs do get lost, but new songs right. do come around. But I'd definitely right. say like we have maybe around 25 to 30 songs. Okay. Like, so, yeah. Officially completed songs. Officially completed songs. Okay. All right. So as we practice more and more people come, it's just more of those songs that will just get added to it. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so how long have you been a member of the band? Almost a year. Okay. Um, average about a month exactly. Eleven months. Eleven months. Okay. That's awesome. And how did you get in contact with Arthur Steel Symphony? I got in contact with Arthur Steel from 
the other story and I was part of, the American United Methodist one, because um, our teacher is part of our history and wanted to kind of join in during the summer. Okay. And um, how long have you been a part of that all of that? About four years. So how did you get into Steel Pan Um my church so announced that they're starting a band and that they're gonna give lessons, so I signed up. And this was what, what around what time? What year? Um, I was still in high school, so like So you've been playing for probably after the five years now. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So how long have you been a member of the band? I've been a member of Harper Steel for around six years, mm -hmm. around 2012. I usually tell people it's 2014 because I really, um, I remember 2014 was a good year for me. Mm -hmm. So how did you come to find out about Hartford Steel? Um, so my dad bought me a pen in Trinidad and I was playing around with it just you know I was like oh these notes sound good or whatever and then I I decided to do a talent show at my church right mm -hmm. and this lady heard me play and she's like oh my god you need to meet these people mm -hmm. and then so I say of course because I was really interested in pen mm -hmm. so I, I finally get the number they say come to East Hartford I went and and that was the start of it all. Who did you contact? Uh, Michelle or Mr. Griffin? Um, the first person I contacted was Curtis Greenwich. Okay. And then he said, come come to East Hartford and see what a practice looks like. Because I was pumped, but you know, when you reach and you see the real thing, it's different right. than the dream. So, <laughs> so right. he come and I, I got to see what uh, what work yes. is. Like. So you said prior to joining this band, you haven't had any experience with Steel Pan before. It's so having that kind of transition of meeting experienced players to somebody who's innovative as you are, how, what is that experience like? It's exciting because I always used to play drums and then all of this has to do with notes and different keys and I really wanted to be good at it. Mm -hmm. So just seeing everybody being able to vibe so co coercively mm -hmm. was shocking but it's also inspiring like mm -hmm. it's amazing to see so it was a, a good experience yes. in terms of finding that that balance my first practice was definitely a good experience okay. mm -hmm. so um so how long have you been a member of Hartford's Phil symphony since june so maybe this is like my second month okay but been yeah, fairly recent all right and how did you find out about Hartford Steel Symphony? Mm, I found out through Curtis, and he was one of the uh, teachers for the Steel Pan class at Trinity. And so he knew I was here for the summer, because it's my second summer at Trinity. And I kind of wanted to get involved, so he reached out to the band, and I kind of joined the band. So Trinity College, the school you attend, has a steel band orchestra? Um, well, it's a class. Uh -huh. I wouldn't say it's like a band, because you know there's different members or okay. players each semester, but yeah, there's a class at Trinity, and I've been I've been in the class for three semesters. Now, right. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, prior to your experiences here at Trinity, have you ever been active in the in playing steel pan or any instrument <laughs> at all, any uh, musical instrument? Not the steel pan, mm -hmm. but growing up, I did play the piano and the guitar. Okay. So, so you have some musical background. At what age did you start playing the piano? Um, I think at Eight. Okay. Eight, and I played until like thirteen, but then I moved, and I couldn't go to practice anymore. Okay. But, yeah. So you could? Would you say that you can cite read music? You have a fair knowledge of music, a basic understanding. A fair understanding. Of okay. It, yeah. Okay. So does did that motivate you to get into Steel Pan at Trinity? Because you had an understanding, or were you just it just interested in the instrument and it had an interest in the instrument? Yeah, I was interested in it, and like so, I'm from Chicago, and there's not a lot of Trinidadians or Islanders there. Mm -hmm. So coming over to the East Coast, and especially in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, there's a lot of that culture here. Mm -hmm. And so I heard about the Steel Pan class from one of my friends, and mm -hmm. once hearing the music and actually seeing you guys perform at the little mid year Samba Fest, I was like, yeah, I need to be in that class, so I signed up for it. And Professor Gums was my um, 
intro to world music mm -hmm. teacher my right. freshman year first semester so he was very like influential in that as well all right all right that's good so um you say you have only had two months of experience in the band how many songs have you learned thus far and could you name them um i've learned four mm -hmm. one is year for love the other one was hello oh i forgot the other one but mm -hmm. it's sweetly it's something in the name all right and then the fourth one was I can't think of the name, but it's a popular like American song. Right. So. <laughs> so in two months you've learned, you've covered four songs. Yeah. All right, that's pretty good. <laughs>
Congress. Yes. All right. Let's try to confirm the other part with the I'm back part. Right? <laughs> Keep in mind, we're going to slow it down because their part is really fast. Okay, so you just slow it down a bit so they can catch it. Not that slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If you got to play that slow, there's a problem. There's a problem. As long as you've been played. Yeah, I'm a full man. All right, let's try it. From, uh, from the part before, from...
Stop cracking up. You guys catch up. We're going to finish off this piece and move to the next one. First time. started to get involved in PAN? I would say about, I get put out of school at Osmond High School on Friend Street. I used to take the, my school fees and give a friend to save money to buy drums so we could chew PAN for a band. I had to be about, I would say about 15, 14, 15 years of age. Okay. So you started making before you were playing, or was no, it the other way around? I first. Uh -huh. I learned to play first. 
um, I start making when I get 16, 17, when I could get to get out of the house. 14, 15 years, my mother and father in the thing get out of the house to, to go and chew no pan. <laughs> but when you reach 17 and you start to work, they give you a little freedom. Mm -hmm. You still have to try to come in the house certain times, but they give you freedom to so I could go and learn with the guys that tune. I had a good friend, Winston Wellington, very good musician. Can't read nothing but, can't read music, but very, very good, versatile. He teach us all the chords. When we, on Saturday morning, he teach us how to form chords, how to, you, you learn a C scale, you know how to, and break it down and make it a B, you know what to do to make it C sharp and make C sharp a D. So you, you must learn all the skills. But Winston Wellington, then Herman Collins from Casablanca, mm -hmm. he teach us how to groove, how to groove the pan. We, we come and sing the pan of them and he come and mark them up. So what, 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 what do you say was your inspiration into making pan? I know you say you started to play, but what inspired you into the making of the pans? to get involved in um, that. This guy from um, them Fortunates and within the conversation I'll remember his name but this, this is so much years. He used to make the small pan in Diego Martin and I used, used to go down in the and fill my car up in the trunk with this, all these small parts and bring them home and tune them. And then after a while, after a couple of months, two, three months, I heard him asking, um, who does make this pan here? And this, this uh, big fellow over there, that time I was lifting weights, I was well big. Mm -hmm. So that big fellow over there, he said, um, he, he called me, um, Called me and said, um, you make this pan? I said, yeah. He said, no more small pan for you. Go to a big pan, you tune in them small pan and them too good. Everybody else just do it. If I saw that, you always was singing to one another. And as he said that, then I realized I gained in some experience on it. Then I used to watch Tony from North Star Tune and watch how he's made the pan. And to me, the man I play with North Star, I, I think he's the best tuner I see in a tone of pan, everything else. So when the band playing, I, I like his setup. Everybody have, making a C, everybody have to move to the right. If you're making the B, you move to the left. So it look like, why is the band playing like it? You're da almost dancing. Because mm -hmm. when he says, see, everybody at the lean over. Mm -hmm. You say B, everybody lean over. You say A, everybody at the. You say G sharp, everybody up. G, every. So you, 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 you're playing like if almost like you're dancing. Okay. The spider web is, is the right, is the nice pan. But, but so when the guy say you could make big pan, then I start a tune um, te I, I didn't used to take so much tenor because tenor to me had and then and then the area the mass the mass area you had to tune so small mm -hmm. so you had to get to put that song inside inside it and i continue and then i leave north star and form my dad dad used to teach me to play guitar so i, I form raven's combo and then I still like pan, I played with no star. And then he no sun had ravens combo, combo, then I played with Sun Valley. And that's the recallings and teaching me to how to blend a pan and what to do and, and showing you what things. And then I feel like I was getting into it, but the get a take away plenty of the pan. I did like the co combo side. The co combo side is less. You're going to play out. Everybody can put the instrument in the car. If you have a band, you have to look for truck and this and that. Okay. And when I am ready, I have a visitor come to America. 
through that North Stars again. And when I come, I went to Boston and I I want to open my first I would not open my combo side. And some guys take me to a party. And you see a, a guy playing a bass guitar and blowing a trumpet. <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> I can't compete with people <laughs> like that. And I see the, the one playing the piano and he blowing a trumpet. I say, no, I can't compete with them. The best thing I could do is open my band. Me and my brother went to New York, Queens, to see Ellie Manning. So well, we wanted to get two tenors. And Ellie said, how much money you guys got? We said, we have 1300 And he said that you guys must be opening a one-man band. That means the money is not enough. So we mm -hmm. don't mind. Because my brother played with um, Westside. And I played with North Star. So we kind of know how the band is. Because the guy that tuned for Westside used to tune for North Star with Tony. OK, so Woman Rob Johnson, that's his name. And I used to get the drums and I asked the landlord if I could make the noise in the basement and he said yes. And we do. the first thing I do is make cellos. I know I play cellos with no sound, no, it's supposed to sound. Mm -hmm. So I, I get it there and it's song, it sounding nice, nice. Then I fix second pan, it sounds good. The last thing I end up trying to do is tenor. But pan is something you just get hook on it. If you tune and it come out nice, you want to see what the next product comes because every time you do a pan, it should do do better mm -hmm. and do better. Because but you still have to have a little class with it because you have to try and get it neat to compare with the guys in Trinidad because I don't know what it is do with the pan in Trinidad. It's, it's so smooth, neat, no hammer marks. You feel like it is a machine make it. Mm -hmm. We, we do have, we can't get it like that here. Now we're getting it a little bit like that because we're understanding mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's metal you're forming. And if you rough the metal up, mm -hmm. it's going to come out rough. Right. If you take your time and cut the metal down, it will come out smooth. So mm -hmm. it takes a certain time to do that. All the tuners, good, good, good tuners in Trinidad is over 65. All the good tuners. Now I ain't saying it have young fellas. Um, young fellas could tune good Mapo. Mapo is 54. Mm -hmm. and he, 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 he's the youngest person to break the barrier. He come out in boom and he could he could copy Brown and Callis and all the big tuners. He could match them. He, he's very good. A nice one, nice 20? No, I don't. Oh, I you just, so. okay. I suggested 20, but if this is 16. It's 16 and a quarter. So which one is the? This is C and this is G sharp. Yeah, but it is too big. Uh, too big, it, it, it go get trouble to tune. Okay. You gotta put this, and what is this? This is E. Is e. e that is the same size as that one. Let me see the marker. Okay. Or the next one. The deeper you go, the, the more wider um, it's going to get. See this 
way too big. This needs should be about here. All right, let's see. But I just yeah, I just measured the G sharp and the C. And what left you need yeah. this now? You can't do that. You have to have it's a, 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 it's a base note that you're making on it. Yeah. So you, have to, you still have to have a size. This is G sharp. So this line has to come. Come down there. Right. Um, let's see the E you now. I could have swear here somebody talking. I think they went upstairs. Yeah, nobody upstairs. No, they went upstairs. Oh, your wife not upstairs? No, she going to pick up um Kyle? Yes, girl. Oh. Well guys, I think that's them come there. Now. Think it about market. So now, see, you see the back mark is good. So I just use oh, yeah, sure. that one. I have silver ones. So the back mark is that sharp. Then, all right. make sure you put the C over here. Okay. Sis, sis, how are you going, honey? Good I'm going to make the F sharp a little smaller. Uh, Not bigger? Same. Yeah, this is, I'm making it the same. But it's okay. I'm making it the exact same. It should be the, a little bigger. So by the time it's out of pound, it should stretch. Well, 
it would get cooked because see once this have come up and you hear all kind have different notes. Right. And then Hello. Why are you always smiling? <laughs> Daniel! Yeah, she is a great person, yeah. See, you, worry, you worry about the C sharp because C sharp is about three some them tones of the, the E. So E big so the C sharp anyway. Now you have to hope the F sharp is big like the F sharp is be alright. Is G sharp bigger? But okay, so the problem with this pan, if you tune in, mm -hmm. all make basically the same. So when you bang, bang up this and you start a tune, whichever note you get closer, quick. You just bring it to that. Okay. Why? Because of the size of the note? All the notes is basically the same. So it should okay. be sometimes you get a smaller note to sound better okay. than the bigger note. Sometimes. You see like sometimes like you get this a good one to G sharp, but it's sounding better than the real G sharp itself. Right. So sometimes pan is is, is a strange thing. Yeah. Sometimes it, it sounds good, sometimes it and some notes are sound better than well it it, it should if, if it shouldn't be yeah but it have notes get problem it have notes actually get a problem How are you? It make C sharp, it could make D, it could make E flat, and it could make E. This is all the you notes know, you could get with that. When you say you get, you mean like the harmonics in it? No, when you tune in, when you tune, if you tune in? in C, C oh, okay. sharp, and you come and you get a better D, oh. you, don't, you don't even bother with it, you leave okay. it D. If you're making it so, when you bang up the pants, when you from underneath, 
sometimes yeah, you get a lot of trouble to get this smooth but this one coming easy easier, easier. Mm -hmm. so you leave it as D because this here could it could make C sharp it could make D it could make E flat it could make E just like this one could make um, F F sharp G G sharp only what A and the A that's come in the center here. So you see how much notes so this is make um, um, B, this is A, this is could make A, B flat, B, C. So when you do, so when you tune, when you bang up the note, Whichever come in, like your, your groove and everything, you burn and you bang up on this C sharp, nice and ringing and vibrating, nice. You leave it C sharp, uh, or if you get, sometimes you could get it to song better D, you could get it better E flat. And because now, if this is remember this lower, this higher should get this a little better, higher a little better, a little bit because the same distance. Right. Just send me truck tomorrow. Oh, okay. You see what I mean now? Yeah. You see here? See how narrow it is? This actually should be like a square. So yeah. this end get come out a square. Yeah, yeah that's kind of. Yeah, this smaller. Catch it, you must try to catch the mistake before you start a counter-sing. Before you be down the line because you see that one, this, remember we had one mark and it will be the start here, yeah. but that is give it trouble to tune. Say so this and change this line. This line will stay the same. Only thing it gonna come up higher. See, it gonna come up up here. See, that's why it sometimes you use the scriber. They put the scriber on top here. I put the scriber right on top here, and then I measure this here. If you're not sure and you don't want to do it like that, um, you can do like this. So you, you do all that for all the points? All the points. Okay. So you see this one? It, it don't mind it move, it's going to be the same. See, it's going to be...
to the soul. This find the tune already, but it's the heat.